Hi, welcome to Abby's Den. I'm Abby. So I've got a new addition to the family and this is a Dukey. It's the MO114D. Wow. Okay. So we're already meeting a whole load of exciting things. Here's a really good bag of goodies. So they've given me my favourite needles, some Schmetz needles. And you'll see their universal needles already telling me that I can just buy off, uh, off the shelf and I don't need anything special. I can see in here, let's have a look. Now on the box, you'll see that it didn't boast very much. It just shows three thread overlock, four thread overlock and three thread narrow overlock. And um, it doesn't need to boast other stitches because more or less four thread overlockers, they all do the same thing. But it's the it's the gadget that lets you do two thread overlock. But I just need to open it. Let's see, it'll just come off. There we go. I'm assuming this is a cover. Yeah, it's a nice little plastic feel to that. Um, but we don't like plastic. And universal needles, that's brilliant. Some spool caps, so that stops it from flying off when you're whizzing away. Some nets now. Screwdriver, brilliant. And that's really good. It's a screwdriver rather than an Allen key. Because if you lose your Allen key, you're stuffed. <laughs> the important tweezers to get through those fiddly bits. A brush and some oil. Now, this is the thing about oils on other machines. So a lot of people are questioning, I've got a new machine, do I need to oil it? Yes, you do. You do need to oil your machines because the moving parts, they will absorb, um, not the, the, uh, the moving parts don't absorb the oil. It's the dust and the lint that gets in there that absorbs the oil. But they've given you lots of oil, which is telling me it's an important part of maintaining uh, the upkeep of my machine so and all the all important cable and the telescopic extender for the threads this keep this um as your bible for your overlocker and um, you can get books to teach you how to um overlock and you can invest in all sorts of courses but if you don't read your manual you're already um going to struggle First thing I've noticed, there is no thread in the machine other than wrapped around the pressure, um, foot pressure dial. So there they are, loosely tied on. So hopefully you can see one, two, three, four. The machine is set to its perfect setting. So if I remove this piece of cloth, that they've got, just find where the uh, press foot is. There's a, a, an overlock and they've, uh, and they've stitched it on a stretch. So it's set for a stretch fabric, which is great because I'm looking at maybe sewing this next. But the first thing I need to do is to remove, let's turn this around so you can see. I'm going to remove these. Um, I'm not sure what to call them. Cone stands. Right, so let's find that telescopic stick thing and insert in the back. Let's bring it back round so you can see. So we have a hole here. Let's insert it in there and insert the guide. There we go. Right, and there we go and there's the guide it looks quite tall actually it goes up really high which is a good thing as well because you want to keep that thread vertical as vertical as you can so it goes up really high so this machine keeps unthreading and i'm not sure why so i need to play with it a bit more and work out what's going on but at the moment what i'm finding is the hand wheels a little bit locked so what i'm going to do is put some of this oil onto some moving parts because I think it might have been in storage for such a long time that it's just dried up. There we go. All right, so that's enough of um, how much oil I need. And I'm going to put 
couple of drops in that area there. And actually it's working already. Okay, but I am going to put another drop at the back there and another drop in different parts. It tells you where to oil. So it's telling me to oil in that set. There you go. So let me give you some pros and cons, my pros and cons about this machine. It's quiet, relatively quiet. It doesn't bounce around. All right, so let me give you a rundown of the um, machine itself. So it can do four thread overlock. That's using all four threads in the machine. So two loopers, two needles. You've got three thread overlock. Now you will always use your two loopers and either one of the needles, which means you can either have a three thread narrow overlock if you only use the right hand needle or a three thread wide overlock if you use only the um, left hand needle. So that's your main stitches, but then it boasts that you can do two thread overlock. So if you use that little gadget I showed you at the beginning of the video and install it, it's a little bit fiddly to do. So uh, you might need some help with that if you have um, problems with your fingers, um, arthritis, or maybe not as dexterous. Um, but you, it does struggle to get that little pin in there. So, um, but that's typical of all machines when you convert it to a two thread overlock. Um, but it does give you a nice stitch. I think I've shown you in the video. Also, I like the sliders rather than the dials because what it means as well, these wide gaps that they've given you, um, you can see the tension discs on there and you can see that they open and close, which also means it will be easier for you to clean. So just grab a piece of cloth and then just insert it in between and just wipe it up and down. So that's going to help maintain your machine a lot better. What's the other thing I liked about it? I like this telescopic tower. I like that, that it goes really high, but it's really flimsy. I think I really need to put some effort into pushing that down and uh, securing it in there. So you do need to be, ooh, you need to be quite forceful with that. So I need to push that in a bit more. It's got the pressure foot dial in there. Um, so the, what are the other features that I like? The needles. I really like the fact that I can use standard needles. I've used some overlock machines that um, insist that you use a certain um, type of needle. So having a regular universal needle that I can use in there, that's great because it means I can use whatever I need to for the fabric that I'm working with. So I use 60 when I work with chiffon. I'll use a 90 when I work with denim. Um, which is also reminded me that the knife is brilliant. It's very sharp. Um, but the negative side to the knife is that you do get a really, um, a lot of dust build up on that. But with this door, um, it, it's really neat in there. It's almost seamless uh, the way it fits, that you don't really build up much dust. I've, I've just made a video making this bag and the um, dust build up in there was only on the knife. There was nothing in there. None of the threads caught in there. None of the fabric caught in there. So that was a real big advantage. Again, really thought about the maintenance on that machine. Um, it was stiff to start off with. Still is a little bit, but that might be, it's just a, a heavier duty machine. And I can say it's a heavier duty machine because it will sew and not bounce around. That could be, it's just heavy, which is a different thing from heavy duty, but it is really good with that. What are the features for a beginner? Now, again, it's one of those things people ask, what's a good beginner overlocker? Well, all overlockers are the same. They have the same sort of uh, functionality, but um, for a beginner, the having that thread map there is really useful. Um, one of the other machines have a little area here where you can store all your goodies, like your tweezers, your spare needles. I find that really useful to have that there because I don't always um, want to use my overlocker. So having all my goodies there um, helps me 
um, with with accessing the tools I need almost immediately. Uh, reminded me of that door. I know there isn't a trap there to catch all the cuttings. So that's negative as well. But you can make yourself a mat. The problem with making yourself a mat is that you lose the grip on the machine, which is on the table. But I have been using the machine because um, I did notice some oil in the bottom of the box. When I picked up the machine, I used um, plastic sheeting, didn't I, for the review. What else do I like? I like the shape of the machine. I think it's really good. I don't like the yellow bulb. I really do think they could have put a, an LED in there. So I think I might change that to a white light bulb. I, uh, the warm glow is lovely, but when you're looking at stitches, you need to be able to see them very clear. And a daylight um, LED light bulb in there would really help with that. Um, Differential feed dial and the stitch length dial are really accessible on the side here next to the hand wheel um, and they move quite easily and they have a good variation. Although the differential feed only goes to 0.7, it would be really good if we could have it even narrower down to 0.5 on some models. Some machines you can get down to 0.5. Um, but let's put that back to, to neutral. I don't know why they've not called it 1.0 and just left it as an N. Um, but that's probably to help beginners know to leave it, it at N for normal or neutral, whatever they want to uh, refer it to. I'll have to check the manual for that. Um, so looking at the presser foot lever, the presser foot lever in its natural sit down state is... Um, it moves around like that, it's free. I don't like that. I always think that's mechanically just weak. But when you lift it, you can get up to a five millimeter height. But then you, it also has an extra thrust. So on a lot of sewing machines, you get an extra thrust. But if you lift it up a little bit, it actually stays in that position, which is great. So um, that's really useful for when you're doing heavier work, uh, heavier or thicker fabrics like quilting or lots of layers of denim or something like that so I think on the whole for 500 pounds is how much it's cost me for 500 pounds I think I'm really happy with the machine overall really pleased with it I think for 500 pounds it wouldn't have really cost them very much to have given you um, a trap to catch your bits and bobs to have something there to store your tweezers. Um, I think the um, mechanism inside here to thread up, oh, I shouldn't forget that. So the mechanism inside here to thread up the machine is phenomenal. That's really good. So that allows you access to that looper that's directly under there. You know what I'm like with that. I think it's the, the manufacturer should make that looper, that guide under there easy to access and they have done on this machine which is super and oh and another big because we're in this area that knife I really don't like knives like that at all I think it's um they just I always forget how to use them <laughs> played with hundreds of them because they're on a lot of models of different kinds of machines I really don't like that um I think it's I think it's just dangerous. I like that I can open this side of the machine, but there isn't a free arm, which is disappointing. Um, so close that. I think um, I like the shape of the machine. I love that it's really heavy because when I'm sewing and I like to sew fast, this machine does go all the way up to 1500 stitches per minute, which is quite fast. Um, it it um, doesn't judder, it hasn't moved, it hasn't bounced and I love that about this machine. Pictures, lots of pictures in the machine, instructions telling you to keep it um, unplugged at night, make sure you clean it, don't throw a bottle of water on there please and just goes through everything you need to know about them blue. So I think on the whole, yep, I really do like this machine and I'm looking forward to using it some more.